so welcome everyone uh, to a webinar on uh, body image self esteem and uh, rheumatic diseases uh, today we are here to talk about this topic and just a quick reminder to people patients engage is an online platform operational for 5 years and we are focused on evidence based and holistic management of chronic conditions largely from the perspective of patients and family caregivers we believe in the value of lived experiences and how being informed leads to better decision making as well as better quality of life uh, today we are here to discuss a topic which is rarely spoken about uh, the impact of rheumatic conditions on body image as well as self esteem of uh, patients uh, we are very pleased to have with us a very wide ranging uh, panelist group covering quite a few conditions uh, so our panelists are kirti da who is the founder of shograns india uh, essentially around shograns syndrome neetu vadwa who is founder of scleroderma india uh, vacha samrita who Uh, is also co-founder of Lupus Trust India, uh, Amisha from Antardhwani, which deals with ankylosing spondylitis, uh, Aruba Kabir, who's a mental health therapist, and I am from Patients Engage. I'm the moderator, Aparna Mittal. So, just a reminder to all our attendees: uh, the discussion here is based on experience of the panelists as well as what they've. gathered from their discussions the peer discussions with the various other patients uh, patients in their uh, support groups and it's not to be taken as medical advice so please do consult your doctor for specific medical issues uh, this session is being recorded and will be put up on youtube and if you're logged into zoom please post your questions on the q and a if you're on facebook you can post them on the live feed and as always you can follow us on our website patientsengage.com or our social media channels instagram facebook twitter uh, youtube and you can write to us at editor@patientsengage.com uh so quick reminder to people if you're wondering what does rheumatic diseases uh, comprise of uh, basically these are conditions which largely affect joints tendons ligaments bones <coughs> muscles and various other organs uh it's the the cause is still unclear for most of them there are some genetic factors sometimes uh, uh, environmental factors and so on sometimes lifestyle but uh it's essentially that your immune system goes awry and attacks your own tissues and uh, one of the surprising things is that there are more than 200 distinct rheumatic diseases the most commonly known are osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis but today we are not talking about them specifically we are talking about lupus we are talking about ankylosing spondylitis uh, sjogren syndrome uh, scleroderma right but there are others as well so before we get started i thought i would kind of talk about what the structure is going to be we are going to talk about what is body image how does it impact uh, persons who have rheumatic diseases uh, and how does their condition affect them physically how it impacts their relationship with their self uh, as well as with others and what they can do to reclaim their self esteem uh, and we, you know all of this we will be discussing with our panelists today the reason we chose this topic is that we see patients struggling with these issues and this was feedback from our panelists as well and there are not too many forums that help us you know that address this right so um, and these are not conversations that you typically have with your healthcare provider so that was one of the reasons we chose this topic uh, so coming to back to the topic and let me not spend too much time uh, you know kind of talking about these things let's start with uh, let me stop the sharing and um, Aruba if you can talk a little bit about what is body image and uh, how uh, rheumatic diseases affect them sure uh thank you so much so yeah 
when we say body image or self image it's like a mental picture you have about yourself as a physical person and as an individual so physical person is like limited to your physical appearance but when i talk about an individual it's overall your perception about how you are as a person and now it is like a lot of you know uh because if we are not comfortable in our own skin if we are not comfortable with ourselves we don't accept who we really are you know we find ourselves less attractive less desirable we don't find ourselves smart intelligent and that questions a lot of things it's not only how you feel about yourself now it is also how you perceive the world how you interact with the world and that is how it affects your daily routine your relationships your health your each and everything that is what like when whenever we are seeing cases when i work with people who have any chronic illness it becomes very important to work on the self image body image yeah thank you thank you aruba so let's get let's talk to each of the panelists um kirtida let's start with you um in terms of sjogren syndrome how does sjogren's affect uh, the patients uh, physically hello everyone as uh, most of you know i am a patient myself and have been a patient leader since 2006 so i have had an opportunity to listen to a lot of uh, problems that patients share and usually these are problems which don't get discussed at the doctor's clinic so like aruba just said the body image is something which bothers a patient uh, because it is uh, their own description of themselves and uh, it gets affected in many ways uh, due to uh, chronic conditions due to age and there are a lot of uh, complications which uh, i mean a lot of changes in physical appearance that may occur not only due to the disease but uh, just the fact that you are suffering from a chronic disease and you are aging as you progress but specifically to shogun syndrome uh i would like to mention uh, a few uh, of the things which uh, are a result of the disease or the medic due to the disease uh the most common problem or the complaint that uh, one gets to hear is loss of hair and uh, uh skin pigmentation these two uh probably occur in all the other chronic illnesses also so i will not dwell too much on uh, skin and hair although i would say that if it is bothering you too much i think uh, maybe consulting a skin specialist or consulting a uh, trichologist may be one of the ways you could go if if, if the condition is a bit much more than uh, what uh, the doctors normally expect weight gain or weight loss is another thing which bothers uh, people in several of these conditions and specifically to shogrens there are two very important uh, uh, problems uh, one is uh, the harm to the teeth there is because of the dryness there is a lot of uh, dental caries and uh, therefore uh, there is a lot of decay in the teeth uh, not everyone is able to take adequate care and treat uh, the uh, dental uh, caries and therefore the loss of teeth at a very young age becomes one problem which causes huge repercussions on the body image of the person i have seen people stop talking in public because they don't want to reveal their bad teeth now that is something which is particularly uh, uh, kind of happening to patients with sjogren syndrome another thing which never gets discussed is the dryness that occurs in the vaginal area mm. uh dryness causes uh, i mean dryness is present all over the body everybody talks about dry eyes and dry mouth and dry skin 
but uh, even at the doctor's clinic vaginal dryness is hardly ever referred to and this causes serious concerns in some women not in all but in some women this also causes a painful intercourse and this may cause a, a problem with uh, uh, your relationship with your partners or it may cause uh, other discomfort and this is one area which can be uh, to some extent treated so by not talking about it by not asking you are actually harming yourself please discuss this with your doctor there are jellies which are available there are lubricants which are available and these do help uh, in this condition so please don't uh, put this under the carpet and suffer please go to the doctor and talk to the doctor about the these issues because this is something which not only affects your own health it affects your self esteem it affects your relationships and it affects uh, your ability to conceive which is one of the most important uh, functions as our society believes of a woman and as 90% of children's patients are women this is yet another reason for them to feel uh, down and low on their self esteem if they are unable to have successful pregnancies there again there is one more additional problem with uh, patients with children's syndrome and uh, that happens to be uh, that although this pregnancy is uh, usually uh, advised even if it's high risk and it can be monitored and a successful outcome is expected sometimes there is a problem called congenital heart block and if the first child has uh, a congenital heart block the subsequent baby has a higher chance of getting affected so this is another problem which also affects the self esteem of the woman and i think it is very important that the family understands this the family supports the woman going through all uh, these uh, uh, whatever she needs support in going through a difficult pregnancy it's not impossible but it can be solved so with that i'd like to end thank you thanks thanks teethida um we'll move to neetu neetu can you talk to us a little bit about spiroderma and how it impacts uh, the patients Uh, hello everyone uh, i am neetu radha most of you know me by now uh, i am patient leader of scleroderma india since past 5 years and whatever i am going to discuss with you today is on the basis of the interaction with what patients who have discussed their issues with us so in scleroderma it affects mostly women and mostly of young age when i am saying young age it can occur in 20s also So the age starts from 20-30. That is actually the age when everybody is thinking of their career, their life, their marriage, and everything. So in scleroderma, your looks change, your skin becomes hard, you get white patches or black patches on your skin, your hands curl. Like if you can see on screen, my hands are curled. Not everybody uh, gets it, but yes. Most of the patients get it. When your lips shrink, the this is the most common feature. Like if you walk in into into a hospital, and a uh, doctor can easily point out that this patient is a scleroderma patient, looking at their face because the face becomes a mouth face. That's a typical mouth face we call in medical terminology, and your lips shrink. what happens is when all these things come your body image comes up automatically because these are mostly young girls so what happens is your relatives your family they start looking at you very very differently you know your friends your surroundings and you know this is the time when you start thinking about the relationship so what happens is your marriage market value is negligible because In marriage market in India, your looks matter. That is the most important thing in India. So 
what has happened is we have couple of incidents with us so one girl she had hands like this she actually uh, had gone for a surgery in aims that was the first of its kind in india which happened last year in so there is some hope for people who have hands like this so there might be a cure coming forward even for lips there are lip fillers one of our patient has actually tried it it also happened in past one or two years she is still you know new to it she is still sharing her experiences with the uh, with us how it is going for uh, you know her how things are getting there and uh, yes obviously everything involves money because all this is cosmetic besides your medication so that also becomes an important part because lot of patients come from that kind of family background where it takes difficult for them to uh, procure their medicines on a monthly basis leave aside these cosmetic issues i remember uh, a girl at rose star from a very small district uh, her sister she started having white patches on her face and since they don't have much awareness she approached us so her husband had started putting her sister and mentally torturing her because they don't know why it is happening her husband keeps saying if there is a problem with you you are getting medication but you are of no use to me because it's cleroderma you can't work at home you can't manage the home anyway you can't work much you can't go out with me and on top of that your face is getting distorted so when your body is you know not looking good you are of no use to me and my diagnosis so that was very hard breathing thing for us i remember another incident very interesting to me a guy approached us and wanted to know what is the cure for uh, uh, these white lesions on hands or on skin anywhere i was little intrigued why a guy is asking all this and it very very detailed so then i came to know that this guy is in talk with a girl who is a cleroderma patient and those guys reveal that the girl has cleroderma and she has white patches and we are taking treatment and she will be all right you know and after she starts taking treatment everything will be gone 100% so he wanted assurance from me. what exactly cleroderma is what physical issues are and especially about the white patches whether they will be corrected or not i gave him the correct advice yes medically they can be resolved but it depends on person to person not everybody uh, gets a clean skin few of the patients are still having some white or black patches even for me on my hands there are still some white patches left even though i have taken lot of dermal histology treatments also from big hospitals but they come back the problem is they come back so this has been my experience with the patients uh, around the body thank you thank you uh, neetu uh i think what we should do is um, i mean on uh, ankylosing spondylitis affects men more right so if you can talk about the impact on uh, men and how it affects uh, you know them physically then that will be useful and you're on mute hello everyone i am ami from antardwani antardwani is basically a ankylosing spondylitis support group from uh, 2014 across india so any ankylosing spondylitis patients you are aware of like it will be great you listening to us the major issue the major problem with ankylosing spondylitis is the patient stoop over the period of time and uh, that creates a problem that creates negativity in the mind of the person who is stooping that uh, whether my friends or family will accept me the appearance also creates an issue 
that am i looking nice am i eligible if i'm i'm about to get married because generally this starts at a young there is the feeling of becoming less attractive also many a times there are a few females also who are having this disease so during the marriageable age they have the, the issue that uh, am i looking nice like will someone marry me those are the questions which arise also mm. another issue is that there is pain always there in some or the other part of the body it can be ankle eyes hips middle back shoulder anything and that cause that has a great impact on the body as well as on the mind that then there are other issues uh, which ankylosing spondylitis leads to that is uveitis irritational bowel syndrome so the patients have to take care of lot of things at one time only if a patient is having ankylosing spondylitis and uveitis he has to take treatment from a rheumatologist as well as a ophthalmologist so connecting two doctors expenses all that is also a great problem for the people who cannot afford right. and there are lot of people who cannot afford right right okay thanks another another major issue is sleep disorders mm. because this is a disease when you once you are active the uh, the pain is less and when you are inactive it is increasing so there are issues with the sleep also uh and the last and a very common problem is that there are a lot of sexual problems arising but i think that rheumatologists these days are very approachable you should go and talk to your rheumatologist on how to manage the situation because once you do all this you are going to gain lot of self confidence in you thank you okay thanks ami um and before we bring in you know move to the next topic i think we have uh, watchers from lupus trust so watchers if you can also talk about and lupus is one of those conditions which affects a lot of people at a very young age so i think you know often it affects in people uh, people in their teens as well so i think it's you know the impact is quite significant so watchers over to you hi all uh, i'm watchers from lupus trust india and uh, you know lupus affects uh, you know mainly women in one is to nine ratio but it affects you when you are the prime of the prime of the tender age you're probably 13 12 14 that's like i was diagnosed with lupus when i was when i just turned 14 i was 13 towards the end and uh, so pretty obvious 13 is your teenage adolescent i'm sure looks play i think looks always play a important role but especially in that phase it's it's so it's probably the most important everything else is secondary so uh, when you talk about body image issues that come along with a disease like lupus uh, so with lupus trust india i have probably associated with almost 1000 plus patients and uh, what i'm going to highlight is a few things so one of the predominant treatments for lupus is steroid which again causes extreme weight gain extreme inflammation and moon face so you have this round round face now the fact that you don't see it on me as much now is because i'm on lower medication uh, so that's now number one so every time the doctor increases your steroids you suddenly become a balloon and then when it's reduced you've again shrunk so you're shrunk, you're shrinking and puffing up that happens very often the next thing is hydroxychloroquine uh, the tan that it causes so uh, keeping in mind that uh, you know we belong to a place where uh, color and your the, the skin tone everything is so important uh, from what i have seen i have seen hundreds of patients especially in the rural parts of uh, kerala where they're so concerned about the tan that hydroxychloroquine causes uh so so normally what happens is they they tend people around neighbors family comes and says oh you've darkened and that leads to a lot of them just stopping the drugs so now that is in very directly life threatening uh another thing that could be is extreme hair fall uh and this can also like come in patches so you you might just notice a sudden random bald patch in a certain part of my head and uh yeah that's one aspect 
Uh, there's another aspect that I wanted to talk about is with respect to confidence again, which is a part of body image again, is uh, tremors. So uh, uh, a very, uh, my very dear lupus patient, friend, mentor, Mr. Dinesh Menon, he, he, you know, he was telling me how when he, you can see my hands are already tremoring. So uh, along with uh, tra tacrolimus and the various medication I take, this this issue comes along you know and especially when you're working and um, uh, now we're going to another age group with lupus okay so you you have to sign checks you're signing signatures and i know for a fact that my own signature has bounced a couple of times you know so that i think the with respect to lupus i would and and one last thing would be the stretch marks there are stretch marks in the most random places like your neck or you know so i feel like a combination of these four to five factors can take a huge toll on not just an adolescent but also a person who's working and in the older phases of like 30s and 40s right yeah right thanks vachas um i'm also for the audience that is attending on zoom and unfortunately not on facebook there's a short poll that we will launch uh, so you can fill it up on your own time um but also if you have questions you can start um putting it on the Q&A uh, or on, if you're watching on Facebook, you can put it on our feed. Uh, coming back to our discussion. Um, so we've talked of how the condition impacts people physically. Uh, to some extent, we've talked of how it affects, uh, you know, their own image. Some of you have alluded to how it impacts relationships or, you know, at least factors into the relationship. But if anybody would like to talk a little bit about the impact of relationship with the, with the self as well as others. Uh, so I will start with uh, you, uh, Neetu. How do you think, I mean, you talked of, you know, a couple of examples as well in terms of how uh, marriageability is impacted and so on. But how did it impact the relationship? of people who are already married, for instance, you know, do you have some examples uh, of people or, you know, how does it impact friendships as well? Uh, right, Aparna. So I have a few things to say about relationship with self over here. So firstly, relationship with self is damaged. So that actually talks a lot about in itself because uh, your looks have gone and because of your looks, you are so self-conscious and it takes a lot of time and courage to get out in open and meet people, either it's your family or it's your close friends. See, makeup helps, but to some extent. Makeup cannot cover you 100%. I've been in touch with a lot of patients and their biggest problem is we have this problem or we have this problem. Like my skin is dark, you know, I have these many patches, or like with people who are on uh, HC2S, they have darkened skin, as Vachas mentioned. So those are the kind of things which people want a remedy for. But there is no remedy as such. But only thing which can help is makeup. But over here, again, financial constraints are there. A lot of people have approached us and told us, okay, ma'am, you told us that makeup is we like makeup, but still, you know, it's not looking really nice, you know. My husband is still not happy with me. A lady approached me telling me, you know, that uh, I'm pregnant now and my looks have gone. Firstly, because of scleroderma and secondly, because I'm pregnant. I don't feel that good now. And no matter what amount of makeup I apply, you know, I don't look that attractive to my husband now. My husband anyways was so troubled with my scleroderma. I don't know how to make him happy because the kind of products which I suggest people, they are a little costly because normal makeup cannot cover scleroderma marks. A lot of patients have red patches on their skin. They, we call it red marks. That is telling GCR. These are very, very common marks which cannot be uh, hidden with a normal makeup. You need high density makeup kits for that. So uh, these are my observations with relationship with self, which mostly is kind of damaged. Right, right. Um, I mean, in terms of the impact on uh, men uh, and their relationships with both, uh, you know, you talked of uh, 
pain uh, and you talked of other comorbidities uh, as well. But how does it impact their relationship with their family, with spouses, with uh, their work life? Is that affected? And you'll have to unmute yourself. Yes, it does. It does to a certain extent. As the ankle, ankylosing spondylitis is seen more in males, like you have to work for eight, nine hours every day at a job and explaining your boss or your colleagues, it is a very difficult thing. Reason, be, uh, reason being, you cannot see the disease till the person has not stooped. So right. how will you explain them? So it is advisable generally that you talk to them, you explain, uh, you take a letter from your rheumatologist and share it with, share it with your, uh, for the place where you're working. That might help that, you know, you get a break after every one hour or two hours. Like when there is pain in the body, you're going to get a break. Mm. So, and there are chances that there is a job loss also because you cannot work at all. You're completely bedridden. Right. There are many cases like that also. Right. Right. Then with parents or with family, there are other issues that there is a depend. There are financial dependencies also. Hmm. You cannot work and uh, you cannot go out and do anything. So like you have to take money from your parents. That creates a lot of negativity in your own self. And I think the society is such that even parents might think or the society might think that, see, he is not doing anything. That's the attitude watch de what develops. So right. even that causes a lot of problems. With friends, uh, like over the period of time, the friends do understand that yeah, there is, a, some, there is some problem with you. So cancellation of plans last minute and things work out. Slowly and gradually, but initially, yeah, that affects like you don't have friends or you are into your own disease, solving the issues and how will you cope up with the disease? Those are the things. What are you focusing on at that age? Right. So friendship is like secondary that right now the focus is on curing the disease, focusing on the disease and then it comes the friends. Right. And the, the most important thing is that for anything, there are rheumatologists available. So you should consult them. And there are support groups like all of us. So you can come to us also anytime. Right. Right. Yeah. Great. Um, I think before I move to uh, Vachas and uh, Kirtida on this, uh, Aruba, I'll come back to you later on what are the things, not yet, we're not coming yet to reclaiming uh, you know, self-esteem, but how does one kind of look at, uh, you know, how do you look at not just focusing on the condition? Because I think what happens on a diagnosis is that everybody is only focusing on the condition. So, you know, if you can start kind of thinking about that uh, while we talk to Kirtida. Uh, Kirtida, in terms of, you know, you talked of the impact on uh, sexual relations intercourse because of vaginal dryness. You talked of, uh, in the past, you've also talked a lot about fatigue. Uh, how does, you know, how do all of these things impact uh, relationship with the family, especially because it affects, uh, as you said, uh, women more. Uh, and, you know, so just as Ami said, are they seen as lazy and not doing anything? Uh, you know, what are the, what is the impact on relationship? Uh the first time I spoke, I focused mostly on the physical uh, aspects of self-image. Right. But there are a lot of uh, invisible aspects which affect uh, the patient and in very major ways. Hmm. Uh, they affect relationships, they affect uh, workplace uh, relationships as well as family relationships. Uh, as you know, most of the uh, people who get diagnosed are diagnosed in the uh, mid-career type of uh, age. Right. Yes, there are younger people who get children, but it's either mid-career or uh, geriatric patients who uh, get diagnosed uh, with children's syndrome. Now, uh, what happens is you were already set in a type of 
uh, life pa pattern you are doing a full time job or uh, you are a full time uh, home ma uh, maker you have a social life you have social obligations which you have been doing so far and then suddenly this disease comes on and uh, first of all you don't understand how uh, how it is going to affect you uh, let alone the family and the society which has seen you through all your earlier phase so it does come as a root shock when you cannot plan uh, any activity or event uh, without uh, a kind of be, uh, with 100% surety like uh, i have had to cancel so many dinner invitations i don't attend uh, weddings many times there are so many social obligations which i miss out on or so do the other patients because that day is a bad day you know so those are kind of things if i have i have had embarrassing moments when i've had to tell people i invited you to dinner but sorry i am too ill to cook today so please will cancel uh, the dinner or things like that. i mean these are to my mind now minute things but at the time and when you are still in the phase of accepting your disease these become very huge because uh, your self image Uh, that you are a capable person that you are a good host that you are uh, able to be friends with lots of people suddenly gets impacted and therefore a lot of people withdraw into a shell and uh, that is what happens to people who uh, are unable to process this change in their own personality uh, right. they become uh, very uh, alone stop talking to uh, their friends stop uh, interacting with people stop going out so that starts happening the other thing is the family takes probably some time to understand and accept i have right. had uh, many patients uh, wanting to uh, come in for our programs and events but uh, their uh, parents in law or their husbands think it is uh, Uh, it is just a sham because she's just lazy she doesn't uh, want to work and therefore she's uh, finding excuses that's the kind of attitude that i have seen uh, happening in her so it's very difficult for patients because they don't look ill uh, to make others understand that they are really very seriously ill in work relationships it's even more difficult because a person who was very ambitious very good at their work very uh, Uh, I, I mean, ready to take on challenges, suddenly becomes very low key, and is not able to perform. Is not able to. Uh, the other thing is, most people don't want to tell their uh, office right. colleagues right. that they are suffering from uh, the illness, and that is where there is another problem because there is less acceptance from uh, the colleagues or the bosses, and the person is suffering because they are unable to perform. and it's a really tricky situation in india we really don't have too many opportunities for work from home except for now corona has really made everybody work from work home, home but okay. otherwise uh, those kind of uh, situations did not exist earlier and therefore a lot of people including myself uh, finally gave up uh, full time jobs and had to settle in for an alternate career or just voluntary activity just to uh, accommodate the various changes that occurred in my ability or uh, the person's ability to take on uh, a regular demanding job so these are when you're talking about relationships relationships with children also are very very important uh, and they do in many ways uh, suffer or they also have as i would say good side effects mm -hmm. uh, for example i i always feel that my children uh, learned to cope with uh, my problems or uh, the problems uh, of a sick mother uh, quite well and they became much more independent and uh, much more caring Uh, then uh, i would have expected uh, people of their age uh, to do at the same time uh, they also had to compromise a lot on uh, not inviting un uh, sudden guests 
they always check back with me ke mama how are you feeling can i invite my friends uh, to come over mm. think, uh, the impulsiveness i think uh, gets lost uh, they are very uh, kind of sure that their ma- mother has to be able to manage so that is uh, one uh, one thing i always missed out my daughter's birthday because every year on that day i would be sick this happened for several years but that is the family which is it and my sisters my husband and the rest of the family made sure that she always had a birthday party although i didn't organize it so that way you know it it is a combination of the family helping you your own acceptance your own ability to deal with it and i seriously believe that over a period of time you do learn to cope and that is what we all need to do right right um watch us uh, yeah i know you talked a little bit of the impact on uh, you know the physical appearance but uh, if you would like to talk a little bit on the impact on relationship yeah see uh, so i'd like to take it in stages with respect to the age so we start from the most youngest uh, stage where uh, you know there are school going lupus patients let's start with the most basic at a school going and uh, let's keep in mind that amongst a lot of uh, other rheumatic conditions i feel lupus is truly truly invisible uh, like you you really can't see it as much especially oh, okay in the diagnosis phase you might be able to see it to a little extent uh, but after that the moment you're given your medication all of a sudden you look perfectly fine uh, and so what i remember when i was in school it it was so hard for my teachers to digest i'm not just talking about my case uh, i'm just saying that i've experienced it too while i hear this from so many other parents of lupus patients so uh, so there's this which is fair enough i guess but again uh, the 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 approach that needs to be taken is to go to your doctor get a sick leave and uh, you know there's so much of effort that you have to put in to prove that you are sick you know uh, i always had to dr- you know add drama to how i had to express myself to my teachers and to people at school so that's one thing and uh, second aspect of school is forget extracurricular activities you are barely sca- scraping through your bare minimum attendance so uh, you know uh, even if it's your sports events or your uh you know music cultural whatever there's wherever there's some amount of energy required a little more than you really have it it so normally what happens in school you connect with your classmates friends all of them through extracurricular activities to sports no one really wants to connect on academics so uh yeah so in that that sense there is naturally an isolation that sets in so in my case i wouldn't say that but i know so many young patients who feel extremely isolated when i say young like barely teenagers uh, you know who feel this kind of isolation uh, the next aspect let's move to the 20 year olds you know 20 25 and 30 uh, one might normally think that oh it's the society that doesn't accept or it's the employability aspect that's affecting you but i can i can tell you that in 9 i will not be able to say st- you know quote numbers but i can tell you that so many so many a uh, number of patients have come to me telling that their relationship with their families are so bitter it's become so bitter see all of us are until your 20 the relationship is sweet and then by the time you're 20 it's always it's almost been 6 7 years of dealing with the disease your family has understood that ki acha this is how it's going to be there'll be some downs there'll be up we'll admit her we'll give her infusion she'll bring her back life should go on so the tolerance also i think reduces gradually with that and um, now and let's talk about money it ruins a lot of things and even if you're talking about family i feel like uh, i know cases where pa- parents have very casually brought in up money is of the money of you know they start accounting yeah, yeah like you know oh, you know that i spend this much for your uh, lumbar yeah, puncture and uh, you know so much 324 or so uh, like everyone here in the panel mentioned working to an extent if it's not conducive you can't expect a lupus patient to be a sales person not possible 
so i'm not saying that uh, it's difficult for lupus patient to work i feel like just finding the right oh. niche identifying the right area that could suit your health could just change the whole uh, scenario uh, so yeah and that's that's another thing so that's one aspect and let's move a little more uh, you know to an older age so you started from school you've gone to family a little bit of employability aspect and then uh, gradual path for majority of indians is marriage right so uh, i know so many patients and families who have been hiding the illness from the in laws i mean just imagine the toxicity that accumulates inside you when you're hiding something you are living the life of a criminal without doing any crime you know i'm just giving you an analogy so it's easier for others who are watching to relate to so that can uh, and then finally when it comes to you know uh, having a baby conceiving then that's when things hit really really hard and uh, then then a lot of drugs need to be stopped when you're trying to plan then then there's this is panic in the in law side you know, what what is happening you know yeah so uh, yeah so marriage i also know a lot of uh, pay- cases where post marriage the on post delivering the baby in the next one week it's the diagnosis is done so i feel like the the emotional oh my god i can't even imagine what the mother would be going through you have a baby you're not well you just married you have in laws and then the disease is also there which is like a oceanic amount of pain to go through so uh, and then further the a natu- lot of times the natural path is you a lot of they divorce and uh, so yeah i know i i just spoke i have spoken to almost 20 divorced lupus patients in the last one month um just because of you know a lot of things you know just not being able to participate in the relationship not being able to be a a so a, a good a, you know a, what do you say a responsible homemaker or whatever a combination of all, all of this um another aspect i'd like to add is uh, with respect to men you know that's probably the other sad aspects of uh, sexism you know a lot of lupus patient men that i have spoken to even though the ratio is much less uh there's this burden that they should be the primary breadwinners and yeah. uh, so the amount of guilt that is put on a lady who is not able to bring home money is so much more less than the amount of burden pain put on a man who is not able to bring home money in with this disease i think ami will be able to really connect with this fact so uh, yeah i feel like so all of this in general so now your family is you as isolated you to a major extent or you have isolated yourself because you feel worthless you know and uh, then you're divorced and uh, so I, i think a lot of this and financial dependency ruins a lot of it again so yeah so this takes a massive massive toll on uh, yeah on right. patient yeah. right so i think we have covered a fairly wide gamut of impact that it has on relationships right and at various age groups uh, across both genders um i guess the question then comes to you uh, and i'll start with uh, aruba but uh, later on come back to you all as well as patient leaders but what can people do to uh, you know kind of uh, reclaim their self esteem and cope with all of these uh, difficult issues uh, and sorry uh, i know there's a question so this is for somebody on facebook they asked a question about distinguishing menstrual pains from ra pains and i know we don't have anybody with ra but if any does anybody here have a comment to make on that um if not then we'll just let that person know that we don't really have okay so uh yeah so the person on facebook who's asked that question uh we we will get back to you but on this panel we don't have the right uh, panel you know the right information so uh aruba yeah yes so uh you, you know after listening to everyone and uh, uh, the symptoms and how they are coping up and how they it should be and how it shouldn't be and all uh th- th- there are some things which we need to understand from mental health aspect which is like uh a person who is not able to have a proper relationship uh be it physical uh, relationship and then physical intimacy or emotional intimacy 
they end up feeling a loneliness and isolation comes in and when we in mental health we talk about depression so social anxiety social avoidance uh, these are like you know uh, concerns about appearance are three most important factors people fall into depression there's a study about it now all these three things are happening here uh, with people who are living with any kind of uh, chronic illness any kind of uh, such uh, rare disease so it is happening there so it's very very easy for them to get into depression if they are not taking care of them uh, in particular ways where normal people who have other health issues which can be diabetes blood pressure in fact cancer you know because that is accepted socially by people okay you are diagnosed with cancer you become a cancer baby you are not asked other things but where if you tell them oh, i have you know as or i have lupus oh you have to live with the rest of the life you cannot have a normal life you know there are these stigmas so one you suffocate with it so you end up having more emotional issues more mental health issues there's a shift uh, and this shift is not happening because your body is changing the shift is happening because your mental uh, uh, you know uh, perception of yourself is changing and how people are looking at it so it's very very important to take care of the emotional uh, health now how do i do that it's very important to first understand your condition understand understand what you are going through and knowing it well what does it require me to have that normal life you know so call it this normal life even if it is 20 30 40% <laughs> but what is it and uh, 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 what i said uh, that you know it is not impossible that you cannot work but you only need to figure out what is suitable to you what is practical to you so since i also live with a medical condition where i get breathless i cannot walk much so i realize is it something i can do in longer run no i cannot i was getting tired i was breathless so i was like okay i want to do something which i can sit and talk i'll have more energy and i can make my livelihood also so you need to understand your medical condition what it is know about it connect with the groups can get all the right knowledge and then figure out what do i want to do now what course should i take what job should i take part time business anything and what is my capability and yeah you are not like others that acceptance has to come now saying that pushing yourself uh, i was working with a person who had uh, ankylosing spondylitis and um, a good looking uh, guy in his late 20s uh, with a good business but then uh, he was very particular about his looks and he had just uh, gotten into this that you know my body is changing my body is changing i am not married yet though he was making good money he was taking physiotherapy every day massages exercises everything but it was still happening and then i was like is it only about your body is it about only marriage and is it what is it about and then he said no i'm not able to have good sexual relationship with my girlfriend also because there are postures i cannot do i cannot be there so you need to understand and you need to accept it okay i have a particular condition this limits my this moment or this limits my this uh, feeling how do i work on it so understanding that coming to that acceptance and then working on it now why do we say that it is very important to stay in, a, in touch with a professional because that professional helps you to look at the positives of it you know when we are going through something it is not possible for us to look at the brighter side to look at the silver lining every day we are like okay okay i will focus on the best of the things i will it is not so that extra nudge outer nudge uh, outside nudge and uh, uh, my family can be that my friends can be that they can be biased at times you know they are, they also have their own things going on in their life and sometimes they are not in mood and you go to them hey today i'm feeling really low i think i'm not good enough and they like yeah you are not good enough so that can pull you down so that is where this professional comes handy you are like talking to a person who comes from a space or maybe the support group uh you know uh, hemi talked about yeah kriti that talked about uh, nitu talked about this support group that is where you tell them because they know what they are going through we call them gatekeepers 
you know they are gatekeepers they are trained they are not professional but they are still trained to handle your emotions and to give you a boost to stay in touch with those gatekeepers and uh, just make sure that you are talking to them every now and then so that you keep looking at the positives of it also i would say you know a lot of people don't understand the importance of physical exercise they say okay physical exercise is physical exercise but you need to understand physical exercise also makes you release dopamine uh, serotonin which are the hormones released for your good mood good sleep good appetite and if you are not physically active if you are not doing exercises you are not going to release them so maybe it it is not that i'm asking you to hit a gym whatever works for you it can be yoga it can be just breathing exercises it can be just a walk or it can be standing with a wall and doing uh, you know toes ups and downs whatever but you need to do that physical exercise that will give you a boost another important thing is having gratitude now why gratitude uh, uh, i am uh, walking on the road and uh, somebody just passed by uh, something fell off the bag and i took the wallet or whatever the paper it was i just handed it over to that person there is a neurological study when you do that an a hormone oxytocin is released from my brain from that person's brain and that oxytocin is responsible for all the feel good factors in your body so for fraction of seconds you felt good now when you felt good you made another person also feel when that is happening you are actually getting into oh wow i'm such a good person and that is bringing the self esteem up that is boosting it uh, slowly you're like wow i'm a good person the person smile at me and i did not do it in out of any expectation it was just something so you need to have these small small uh, things in your life and you need to have that self talk with you uh, you know right now also when i'm talking to you all uh, my ipad is on a stand on that stand is written here i am courageous and independent i am secure i love accept and value myself these are my affirmations is it that i was feeling something today i i don't love myself no but it is just a constant reminder to myself that i accept love and value myself and that is what is self image that is what is self esteem because you have issues in accepting yourself and we give this positive affirmations to people we're like okay you tell me what do you want now if i would accept this maybe you need something else but ask yourself what is it what do i need and work on that also i would say journaling is very very important for people like us or people who are going through struggle uh because not every time there is going to there is some someone is going to be there in your life to listen to you you know it is not that you met with an accident you are going through a phase for 6 months you crib about it curse about it cry about it. no it is a lifelong thing so you don't have to expect others to understand it all the time they also have their things on plate and for caregivers it also becomes very difficult to be there in your space all the time so you need to take care of your own self how do you do that just write it down put all the negative uh, feelings first i feel jealous because all other people are doing good i'm not doing good i feel angry because i'm not able to do i feel dependent because i don't have money all the negative and then when all the negative things are out then write down what do i feel good about oh i still have my hands i can write oh i still have my mouth i can dictate oh i still have my uh, you know ears i can listen to so you then focus on the positives of it but first take out all the negative it is like have a house i know you have a beautiful house it is neat and clean but we sometimes you know in a week or 10 days we still go to the corners and to the washroom corners to the cupboards and we clean it so it is similarly doing with your mind you might be a positive person you might have accepted your condition but there could be those cobwebs you need to remove there could be those dark areas where you need to shed that light on so it's very important and if you do such things on everyday basis and trust me when i say that it is everyday struggle it is everyday struggle we are like plants we it it takes a lot of time for us to become trees who will uh, take all the nutrients and nourishment from the soil on its own so we stay young trees we have to, you know, we have to keep giving that nourishment right amount of so you know water shade everything we have to keep doing it because 
Uh, I, I did a vlog on a friend who passed away last month uh, from a medical condition. And when I asked him that day that, hey, what do you think about it? Do you get angry about it? He said, I, I do get angry about it, that why me? But then I'm like, you know, not everything is given to everyone. So if God has chosen us, I feel there's a bigger plan. So let us focus on that thing. But before that, blaming someone, you, uh, uh, you know, from a psychological point of view, our mind is, our mind gives control to other people. And they take away our self-esteem and they take away something and they take an advantage. It is your mind. If you don't give control, nobody can take it. If you don't want to feel angry, nobody can make you feel angry. Ask yourself, I am feeling angry. What am I feeling angry about? And it is like thought, feeling, behavior. I always tell, what you think, that's how you feel. How you feel, that's how you behave. Now you feel, I am not good looking. My hair is falling. I have acne. I don't have good sexual life. I don't have good relationship. I am financially dependent. How are you going to feel? You're going to feel frustrated, angry, sad. And if you're feeling frustrated, angry, sad, and all other negative emotions, how are you going to behave? You're going to disconnect with people. You're going to stay as an angry person. You're going to be that into depression. But if you feel, I have a medical condition, I am going to take care of it by giving it right knowledge, right medicine, connecting with right people. When you do that, your mind feels, oh, I'm in charge. I'm responsible. I'm in charge. I'm calm. And if you're responsible, in charge, calm, how are you going to behave? You're going to behave out of in charge, out of responsibility. You're going to be productive. You're going to find ways to deal with it. So that's how our mind works. And that is what I would say. That's how we can reclaim it. Thank you, Aruba. That, that's really useful, I think, for a lot of people. Um, it, it's almost like it, I should end with this, but uh, I think I would like to go around to everybody on uh, you know, asking how you individually have worked on uh, accepting and reclaiming your own self-esteem and what, what worked for you. Um, so I'll start with you, Neetu. Mm -hmm. Okay, Akala. So I would just like to share some step-by-step -step procedure. It actually works for me and a lot of other patients. So first and foremost thing, as Aruba also mentioned, patient has to accept the disease. And it's easier said than done, actually. But just taking one day at a time and gradually working on it, you know, talking about it to your friends, your family, to actually understand. And if that is not possible, just get back to some mental health counselor or some psychologist, they are there to help you out. Then we need to indulge in some meaningful activity. We need to keep ourselves busy. We need to distract our mind from that feeling that I'm sick, I have pterodon, I have a chronic disease. So you need to set your routine. Either you are working full-time or part-time or you are at home. If you are at home, you are a homemaker or not able to do much. Like most of the scleroderma patients, they feel that they have a lot of fatigue. They can't contribute much at home. But still, identify things, what you can do. Set your routine every day. That morning, this is the time I need to get up. This is the time I need to do my exercise. This is the time I need to do my... Meditation, this is the time I spend on listening to music, reading, or doing some activity. You know, so this has to be a meaningful thing. So spend some time over there. Now, identify meaningful activity. It's very, very important for you. So where you are spending your time, it could be a hobby group. Identify a hobby group. Like a lot of people say that they write poetry or they are good in art. Or, you know, they are good in teaching small kids, you know, taking care of small kids. So identify what is that best you can offer. And I guess this pandemic has been, a, you know, blessing in disguise for a lot of people because we can actually start doing a lot of online work now. The society is actually accepting now. So just identify what is working for you. If nothing is working out for you, then maybe you can start volunteering with different NGOs. There are a lot of NGOs 
who need talented people so even you will feel good about it that your time and your talent is actually getting used up last and foremost thing is you need to develop a close circle for yourself when i am saying close circle it could be your friends it could be your family it could be your neighbors it could be your colleagues anything so having a close knit circle it gives you a lot of support it gives you a lot of comfort because every time it's not possible that you get to a counselor to speak about your issues your this close circle will give you lot of comfort when you need to speak they give you confidence because they understand the issues what you are going through but for that all the steps which i have mentioned they need some effort from the patient uh, perspective also it's not that it's a magic pill that one day you said okay i start doing it and next day it starts happening on its own so it doesn't work like this way you need to put in a lot of effort to reclaim your life back so that was from my side thank you aparna thanks thanks um what us would uh, do you want to go next yeah uh, so i would there are three things i would like to say uh, with respect to addressing mental health and just accepting acceptance of the disease living with the disease and also moving forward you know going beyond the disease uh, i think number one is uh, identifying that one area of work that you can really do uh, now in my case since i am into uh, i am into product development and uh, you know software based work uh, it gives me such incredible amounts of flexibility i could i can work from home i can work on the bed i can work from anywhere you know i can be even from the hospital there have been so many instances where i've worked from hospital on the hospital bed even during infusions all of that so uh, coming finding out that area of work it you can also think from a more vocational point of view that might also do you some good uh, i'm not saying uh, compromising a lot of things do happen that's a part of generic life as such so uh, don't specifically attach it to a disease like this but i feel like identifying that and you know you, obviously it comes a lot of uh, trial and and then finally you come to a conclusion about it uh, the second thing i feel is just uh, as as families of lupus patients families of other rheumatic conditions uh we have to normalize mental health as a topic um and now the reason i'm saying that is in my case i'm talking specifically in my case there was nothing for me to be depressed or anxious anxious about right like economically touch wood going good medically i could afford every medication i wanted i we were able to get and um, and educate you know in terms of my education that was going on one end it was everything just seemed fine and uh, um even with respect to having a love life it was okay i guess uh, but again so everything just seemingly looked so fine and somewhere deep inside i was just uh, just didn't feel right i was having anxiety attacks i was having uh, bouts of depression uh, not knowing where to go to whom to address it with i feel like that is where my family played a beautiful role it was addressed very clinically uh, okay you don't feel well mentally let's see what can be done let's go to a doctor or let's talk to your doctor first because you know normally you tend to connect it with lupus and uh, yeah and that's one thing now the second thing is to know when to seek help mental health when do you seek help when you draw the line and like okay enough is enough now i know i've reached a point where i need to seek help right professional or even from family or medical whatever uh and the next aspect i wanted to talk is talk about is one thing is psychology based counseling which i also tried for a couple of years and uh, but identifying that i needed something different but in the field of mental health knowing what else to choose uh, like i i realized that life coaching did miracles for me life coaching is what changed everything and i didn't even know a concept of life coaching existed un- until my dad came and spoke to this concept about me so uh, identifying what is that kind of support that you need mentally speaking 
Uh, and the third thing I would uh, like to say is uh, uh, who you are, whom you associate with, right? So the association, the group of friends you have, the people you spend majority of your time with, you know, I would, in, in a more fancier term, I'd say find your tribe, right? Finding is too big a word, but all I'm trying to say is know whom to associate with and whom to dissociate with. Uh, when do you, uh, where do you pull yourself out of a relationship, right? So that is extremely important. So if I have to summarize the three aspects, one would be identifying a work area of work. Uh, like Neetu said, it could also be non-profit, but something that gives you a reason to wake up that very next day and, you know, get going. However, uh, whatever condition you might be in. Uh, second thing would be mental support find the right support you know coaching life coaching psychiatry psychologist psychiatry is medical obviously so your doctor will tell you what to do about it but i'm saying in terms of this and finally the people you associate with so i feel like in my life these are the three things that just changed the game altogether that almost made me feel like i didn't have a disease i was probably living a more than normal and exceptional life i would say a very right. beautiful life so these are the three right. factors I'm just conscious on time, but uh, I will come to you, Kirtida, and uh, next, Ami, of anything that you'd like to add uh, to this. Uh, you're on mute, Kirtida. Yeah, I think you're good. Well, basically, I agree with uh, the two panelists before me. Uh, as far as my life was concerned, I think I had a fairly uh, normal life till I was diagnosed. And my last job was a very exciting one. I uh, taught at a, a college in, uh, in USA. So I was all full of ambition and full of uh, new plans and things like that. And suddenly uh, I had to change gears. Uh, now, uh, I'll, a lot of things which help me, and those have become my guru mantras, which I, which I uh, kind of would like to share with others. There are just three things which I'll say. One is draw your inspiration from people less fortunate than you. Mm. I think that is one thing which has helped me a lot. When I start feeling bad about myself, I actually draw inspiration from those who don't have limbs, who don't have... Uh, uh, they, uh, you, you know, physical disabilities or any other mental uh, challenges. And then I don't feel so bad about my blotches and my fatigue and my other problems because I find that athlete who walk, uh, who kind of runs on uh, uh, artificial limbs inspiring. I find that girl who's doing uh, painting through the mouth and earning her living. I, I mean, I find all that more inspiring and then our problem seems much less. So that is, I think, one of the things that I have learned. Uh, the second thing which has helped me uh, move along always is learning something new. Every year I take upon myself to learn something new, whether it's taking a new course or whether it's learning a new skill. Or uh, Last year I uh, started learning filmmaking. I made two films and one of the films was selected for a, a film festival. Now, it's not something that I'm going to become a filmmaker or things like that, but it just gave me so much joy to learn a new skill. And uh, I made new friends. And it, it's an interesting thing to do. It's opened up a whole perspective of life, which I didn't know before. Right. Uh, the third thing which uh, I feel that everybody needs to follow is to find that me time. In 24 hours, you can find at least an hour in which you devote to yourself, to things that you like to do. You have to identify what you want to do and spend time for yourself. It could be just anything. Uh, so that's uh, uh, what I would tell people. And one of my uh, major achievements of how I accepted my disease was reorienting my skills as a trainer, educator, communicator to starting Shogrins India and helping uh, people. I was an environmental educator. I became a health educator or a patient educator. And I think uh, just following a few simple things 
definitely helps. Right, right. Thanks, Kirtida. Um, who are we left with? Ami. Uh, majority of the things like the panelists have covered. Right. I need to add one or two things. Like in ankylosing spondylitis, like you need to exercise. That's the key thing. So I would recommend all the patients out there to exercise as much as you can and every day. The second is like you can try to make some other patient your role model. That will help you to see the he being a patient, if he can do things, why can't I? And that will give you motivation to move ahead. That's it. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Ami. Um, so I'm just going to also, uh, you know, I'm going to just uh, ask people who are attending to uh, give their feedback as well. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, if there's anything, any final takeaway that anybody would like to add before I do my wrap up? Uh, any last minute words of advice? No? Okay. So I think, uh, thank you everyone. Um, I think it's been an incredibly uh, enlightening session as well as uh, a session that will, that sheds light on stuff that is not talked about. Uh, and I, we hope that, you know, it has helped a lot of people. Um, I think the key takeaways for me were that, you know, you are more than your condition, right? So while it is, it tends to override a lot of things that you do, but you have to reclaim the fact that you are more than your condition. Uh, and you, you need to take those tiny steps to take control of your thoughts and, and as well as behavior. So I think, I know Ami said uh, exercise is important for uh, AS, but uh, again, it's been proven that exercise is important. And I think Aruba also highlighted it's important for everybody. And you find the kind of exercises you can do given, you know, given your limitations, use props, use uh, uh, workarounds, you adapt the exercise, but I think that is uh, definitely important. And one of the things that, we keep saying to everybody is that you have to be kind to yourself because there will be times when you can't do what you want to do. You know, you, we've, you, as Kirtida said, it could be that you were ambitious and you had a certain expectation of what you wanted to do. Uh, or as Neetu said, you have to figure out what it is that you will change your career into or whatever, but whatever you do, be kind to yourself. And if you have a bad day, it doesn't matter. You know, tomorrow is another day, start afresh. Uh, so I think that's something that we all have to remember because this is, this is a long journey. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not going away overnight. So you just have to do that. And I think that I would like to emphasize, even if there are caregivers here who are listening is you also need to be kind to yourself because it is challenging as caregivers as well. So uh, do not guilt yourself. You know, if you have a bad day and you say the wrong thing, uh, yes, you can go back the next day, apologize or make up or do whatever it takes and create moments of joy, moments that you can look back to and, you know, in times which are not good and remember and feel good about it. I think, and especially in these COVID times, I think it's important to remember that, you know, for instance, travel has stopped, right? So do we stop imagining that we'll be able to travel again in six months time or one year time? Maybe not. Maybe it is good to hope that, you know, think about where my first travel will be when travel restrictions open up. So, I think it's important to look at, um, yeah, look for the little joys in our lives and what matters to you. And, uh, and uh, you know, once again, thank each one of you, Kirtida, Neetu, Ami, Vacha, Saruba. I think we've spent hours preparing for this. And I think it's probably one of the most uh, prepared uh, webinars that I have moderated. <laughs> If I if I go back to, you know, the last two years of webinars. So thank you each one of you for taking the time 
not just for this session, but all the prep that we've gone through and the discussions and the debates on what we want to convey and what we want to talk about. So thank you everyone. And thank you to all the attendees who are still around and watching and, uh, uh, and we hope uh, you will leave us uh, feedback as well and what else you want to listen to and talk about in, a, in future as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.